Hello again, welcome back. Um, so right now I'm going through some slides on generalized linear mixed models. We just started, this is the second video in this little mini series. Um, in the first video, we went through the basics of building from the linear model to the generalized linear mixed model. All right, so to recap, going from the linear model to the generalized linear mixed model, we have incorporated random effects to model the correlation. And additionally, on the left-hand side of our regression equation, we have something like the log odds or the log mean. So here's an example of what a generalized linear mixed model regression equation could look like. Um, here on the left-hand side, we have the log odds of something. And then we have a couple fixed effects, beta naught and beta one. We have some variable here, x1, and then we have a whole bunch of random effects. So u1 is my random effect, and then I gave everyone in my family their own random effect until finally I get to the last person in my family, Johnny gets random effect u92. And these random effects are random variables. And a random variable has a distribution. In this case, we're going to assume that these random variables have this normal distribution. We're assuming that they're IID, meaning independent and identically distributed, with mean zero and then variance sigma squared. And like I said before, we could have several different variances, like one for my cousins in California, one for my cousins in Iowa, and so on. Um, or we could just have one single variance for all of the random effects. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. Um, so like I said, I like to go rock climbing, or at least I did before the pandemic shut down my rock climbing gym. Um, so a coach is perhaps watching her students attempt, attempt climbs of a certain grade. So maybe Kayla, my friend, and I usually persevere and try many times. So even if it's really hard, maybe we'll try five or six times. And then we notice that one of our um, climbers, climber friends, uh, may try just like one or two times before they give up and move on to something else. So what we could do is count how many times a person tries before they give up. In this case, our response then is going to be Poisson distributed because Poisson is good for counts. Um, and we could model then the log mean number of attempts before giving up. So our fixed effect is our overall log mean. And then our random effect is going to represent like how much a climber perseveres. So let's look at our regression equation. Um, so if we're Keeping it like really simple, then we'd have just log mean is equal to beta naught plus u1 for Christina plus u2 for Kayla and so on, all the climbers. Maybe there's 30 of us and um, maybe this last one is for Becca. Okay, so this beta naught represents the overall log mean. And actually we'll need to either put a plus epsilon here or we can put a hat over there, either way. So beta naught represents our overall log mean. And then we have these random effects, U1 through U30, that represents how, um, how much this particular climber perseveres. So let's think about this a little bit. If Kayla and Christina usually persevere and try many times, that means they're probably trying more times than average. So we would guess that the U1, meaning the random effect for Christina, is probably positive. And let's just pick on Becca. Let's say that Becca is the one who gives up after a time or two. Um, then U30 is probably going to be negative because she is probably attempting fewer times than whatever the average is. Okay, so the U's represent this particular climber's grittiness or perseverance. If they are particularly someone who is going to just try and try and try, then their random effect is going to be positive. If they're someone who 
tries, gives up pretty quickly, moves on, then their random effect is probably going to be negative. Okay, next example is one of my favorite examples because it's nice and awkward, and it has to do with salamander mating. So there is a single species of salamander, but they come from, these salamanders come from two distinct areas of a mountain. So we have some mountain range, and over here we have maybe the rough butt salamanders, and over on the other side of the mountains maybe we have the white side salamanders. And these salamanders have been split up for long enough that we're wondering, do the rough butts and do the white sides know like which salamanders belong to their team, to their um, crew, or do they not really know how to distinguish between each other, and would they be just as likely to mate with the other group as with their own group? So our big research question is, do salamanders prefer mating with their own population? Okay, so we have rough butts and white sides. We'll use a R to denote rough butt, W to denote white sides. All right, so what the salamander um, scientists did is they went and collected 120 salamanders and used them in a bunch of mating experiments. So um, one day, Sally the salamander may be put in a isolated area with Fred the salamander, and these two salamanders are given a little bit of time, and then the scientists watch whether these two salamanders mate. Then, Maybe a week later, Sally the salamander is put into an isolated space with Bob the salamander, and these two salamanders are given time to mate if they'd like. So since each salamander is used multiple times, then our data, our responses are not independent because the trial that has Sally and Fred is going to be correlated with the trial that has Sally and Bob because Sally is in both of these experiments. So what we can do to model this correlation is give every salamander its own random effect. So Sally will have her random effect, Fred will have his random effect, Bob will have his random effect. And these random effects kind of represent how interested in general the salamander is in mating. So if Sally is very, very interested in mating, it's likely that her random effect will be positive. If Fred is very uninterested in mating, then maybe his random effect will be negative. Okay, so what are some assumptions for our random effects? We assume they're normally distributed with mean zero. And in this model, we're going to have two different variances. We're going to have one variance for the male random effects and another variance for the female random effects. So in other words, Fred's random effect, Bob's random effect, and so on. Those are all going to be IID, normal with mean zero, and variance sigma squared M. And similarly, if we look at you, Sally, you, Betty, and so on, all those female random effects, these are IID normal with mean zero and variance sigma squared F. So we just have two variance components here. Okay, so we're wondering what affects the probability that a pair of salamanders mate. We could look at the type of cross. We could have a female rough butt and a male rough butt. We could have a female rough butt and then a male white side. We could have a female white side and a male rough butt, or we could have two white sides. So in particular, when we're writing down the type of cross, the first letter is for the female, second letter is for the male. Okay, so this would um, perhaps affect the probability that a pair of salamanders mates. And also, we could look at the female's individualized tendency to mate. That probably has an effect on whether a pair of salamanders mates. Because if Sally the salamander is very disinterested in mating, then it doesn't matter who you put her with, whether it's Bob, Fred, George, whatever. She will have a lower chance of mating just because she's not interested in mating. And similarly, we would look at the male's random effects, the male's individualized tendencies to mate. 
Okay, so those are the three sorts of things that affect whether the male, whether the salamanders mate. And so if we want to translate this to a generalized linear mixed model, here we go. We have the response, which is whether or not the pair mated. We have the fixed effects. So beta RR, beta RW, beta WR, beta WW, and these are the log odds of mating for each of these different crosses. So for example, this one here, beta RW, that's the log odds of mating if we have a female rough butt and a male white side. Next thing to consider is the set of random effects. We're going to have one random effect for each salamander. And then we have two variance components, one for the female salamander's random effects and one for the male salamander's random effects. Okay, so what this says is that the generalized linear mixed model response uh, prediction depends on the fixed effects and the random effects. So remember the random effects are those individual specific tendencies. So even though random effects affect the predicted response, we're going to see, like we already said, that these are not parameters, right? Because they're random variables. Okay, so when we look at the parameters, what are the parameters? We have the fixed effects, beta RW, beta WW, and so on. And then we have the variance components, sigma squared F, sigma squared M. Okay, so now we have extended the linear model. Remember that for a GLM, we have non-normal responses. A linear mixed model has correlated responses. And then a generalized linear mixed model has non-normal responses, so maybe like Poisson responses, binomial responses, and then also correlation. All right, so that's it for this video. Next video, we're going to look into doing inference for the generalized linear mixed models.